Uh, do you guys like vacation? You guys like traveling, right? Can I get the camera focused on me a little bit? 카메라 좀더 가까이 당겨 주시겠어요? 네, 조금 더 당겨 주세요. 조금 더 해주세요. 네, 네, 됐습니다. Uh, when was the last time you guys actually traveled? Long time ago, right? Uh, so this is the story. I came to Vietnam in 2022, and I actually got a chance to have summer vacation for about a week, and my wife and I traveled to Pukuok. So, and can I see the next picture? Yeah, that was the room that we actually rented. Looks good, right? So we actually got really lucky because we got the nice hotel and a good price, and we got the free upgrade, and the food was great, the, the view was great, the beachfront, great view. And because I had a membership on the hotel brand, they actually gave us 50% discount on every food that we had. So it was a really good bargain. And I was like, yes, vacation, finally. And I'm in Vietnam. But here's the thing. We stayed there for three nights and four days. Okay, three nights and four days. It was really big room, very newly built and roomy. But here's the thing. Every travel, every vacation had three stages. Okay, remember, there are three stages. First stage, it's like, wow, this is great. You know, I want to stay here for the rest of my life. So it's like the first day, you're like, you know what, this place is great. This place is better than my home. I want to stay here for the rest of my life. And the second stage, like, eh, eh, it's getting a little boring. I'm used to it. That's not much to do. And there's nothing new, no more surprises. Yeah. And third stage, the last stage, it's like, I want to go home. I want to go home. The hotel is nice, the room is nice, you know, but you know what? I miss home. I have to go home, I want to go home. So eventually, you get to the point where you realize there's no place like home, right? Home sweet home. Is it true? Home sweet home? Why does home feel like home home like what do you feel most comfortable at home for what, what reason i mean you saw the room right you saw the picture it's really nice everything's great they feed you they clean for you you don't need to do the laundry but for whatever reason you feel best at home why why what well, easiest way to explain because home is where we belong. And home is, is literally my place, right? Your bed, your bedroom, your bathroom, your kitchen, everything that you have at home is literally, it belongs to you. And that is your home. And we feel comfortable and safe where, when we are at where we belong. So whether it's our home, friends, family, people we trust, or even at church, and this is the reason why we need to find our home. The people that you feel the comfortable around. Your physical home, your spiritual home, your emotional home. And once you are at home, once you're at home, you do not want to leave. Because you are at where you belong. So the passage that we have read today is about the prodigal son. What does prodigal mean? Prodigal means, in easy way, very wasteful. A person who wastes money a lot. So, those of you who spend like, you know, pengman dong for lunch, that's prodigal. Those of you who waste money for nothing, that's prodigal. So, today's passage is about prodigal son. So, it's about a father and two sons. It's about a father and two sons. So, father is a very rich person, and he had two sons. And usually when... A family had two sons. Who is the one with the problem? The older one or the younger one? So when you have an older brother and when you are the younger brother, who caused the problem the most? Twins? Who's the better one? Older one or younger one? The older one's the better one, right? Usually, I'm the younger one, by the way. Usually when there's older brother and younger brother, Younger one is the one with the problem. He's the one who like literally breaks everything, never listens to the parent. He's the one who causes the issue, right? So here's the thing. 
The father, who was a rich man, he had two sons, and older one happened to be the one who works really hard for his father. But the younger one, he's the prodigal one who was not a good son. And here's the story. What does the younger one do? He asks father for the money. Verse 12, he says, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. Verse 12, he said, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. What does that mean? He's saying, this is what he's saying. Father, you know what? Once you're dead, once you're dead, I'm going to get part of your money. And I want it now. It's like asking for yusan, okay? Father, once you're dead, I know you're going to give me a part of your money, like half of your money. I'm not going to wait that long. I want it now, right now. What kind of son is he? Imagine this for a second. Hajuni, right there. He's, he's going to his father. Appa, you know, I know you're going to leave me some money when you're dead. I, don't, I can't wait that long. Give me my money now. Example, guys. He's not that bad person, okay? Example. But anyway, this is what the son is doing. Give me money so, you know, that will receive once you're dead. What does the father do? Whatever reason, father takes half of his property and gives it to his younger son. So younger son takes the money. He leaves home and goes to a far country. And what does he do with the money? He literally wasted them all. He wasted. And to the end, what happened at the end? He has nothing. Rich father gave him a lot of money to him. He goes to different country. He used it all. At the end, he's, leave, he's left with nothing. And he gets to the point where he had no food to eat, so he got hired by somebody, and he's feeding pigs. Guys, what does pigs eat? What do pigs eat? What, what kind of food do they eat? They literally eat everything and anything. How bad is it? Remember, think about this first again. You had a lot of food, and you got chehe, you got chehse. And then you throw up. Pigs come and eat it. Why? Because they literally eat anything and everything. So what's the farmers do? They feed them the cheapest and the lowest quality of food. The son, because he was so hungry, he was about to eat what the pigs were eating. That's how desperate he was. So what happened next to him? He realized, you know what? My father is rich. Let me go home and let me just ask my father. So verse 17, he said, when he came to himself, when he came to himself, okay, he made a U-turn and he decided to go back home. So verse 17, when he came to himself, it means he finally realized, he finally realized, you know what? I made a big mistake. I made a dumb mistake. You know what? Let me go home. Let me beg my father. So verse 18, he says, I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be your called your son. Treat me as one of your higher servants. Imagine this for a second. You made a big mistake to your dad, to your father. What are you going to do? You go to him. You ask for forgiveness, right? But here's, can we go back to the verse for a second, verse 18? Father, I have sinned against you before heaven and before you. That's fine. He's apologizing to his father. But next passage, next sentence. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. What does that mean? Dad, you know what? I made a dumb mistake. I am not your son anymore. Next sentence. Treat me as one of your higher servants. 
He's literally cutting the tie between himself and Father. Is it possible that because you made a dumb mistake that you're no longer your father's son or daughter? I once uh, broke a camera. This was in 1991 or two. So before you guys were even born, right? So back then in Korea, camera was really expensive. Like not that many home had the camera. I don't know how my dad has camera, by the way. He wasn't rich, you know. But anyway, he had a camera, I broke it. And of course he was mad. And I said, I'm sorry, dad. And of course I got spanked, you know. You know, in, back in the days, you know, pizzaru was like short but thick, like, you know. And my dad, he grabbed me. But I'm still his father, I'm still his son. You know, just the fact that I broke my camera or his camera doesn't mean that I am not his son anymore. But look at what he did. I am no longer worthy to be your call, to be, to be your son. He made a mistake and he's saying, you know what, I'm not your son anymore. That's how foolish he was. But how did his father react? How did his father react when the son came back? He gave him a big hug. Verse 24, verse 20, he said, I'm sorry, verse 20, he said, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. His son was coming. Of course, you know, he was ragged. He, the, he had bad clothes on. He was hungry. He was thin. He was skinny. And he looked like pretty Prusange. And his father saw him. What did he do? He ran, gave him a hug, and kissed him. I know we didn't read verse 22, verse 23, but he says that the father said to his servant, bring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoe on his feet. So what does he do? Because the son was really prisang and poor, kanane, he had a really bad clothes. But the father called his servant, you know what? Bring best of everything that we have. Bring it to him and put it on him. Because this is my son. And verse 20, it said, and bring the fattened calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. This is the prodigal son who returned after wasting his father's money. Not only his father was not angry at him, but when he came back after wasting everything, he said, you know what? Give him the best clothes. Give him the ring, give him the shoes, give him Prada, give him like Louis Vuitton, like give him Gucci, bring everything they, we, the best we have. Put it on him. You know what? Bring best food we have and let us celebrate. What did the father just do? What did father just do? The son came back after making a mistake. Father, you know what? I am no longer your son. But not only father ignored it. Not only father just forgave his son for his mistake, but also he made him a better person. He made him a better person. Guys, there are four stages that this prodigal son went through. Four stages. First stage, the prodigal went through ignorant, meaning he was being dumb. He had no idea what he was doing. He didn't know the value of home, and he didn't know the value of having his father next to him. He valued others more than his own, and he made a dumb decision to leave. He chose money over his father at home. That was the first stage. And second stage, he left home, meaning he was away from home. He took the money and he wanted, and he wasted them all. He did whatever he wanted from leaving home to spending his money. The result was not good at all. He wasted and he was left with nothing. Think about this for a second. What was the biggest money that you ever had? What was the most money that you guys ever had in your life? And a couple hundred dollars. Have you guys had peng manon before at home? Have you guys had peng manon? More? Have you guys had chum manon before? Anybody? 
had Chamana like $10,000 ever in your hands before? No, right? What would you do if your dad just gave you 500,000 won? What is the first thing you're going to do when your dad just gave you 500,000 won right now in your hand? Shion is like, oh, my father gave me 500,000 won. I'm going to use it for my girlfriend. Oh, you're dating? Oh. Most of you will probably say, you know what, I'm going to get a new phone, new computer, new clothes maybe, you know, waste it all on the, all the snack, junk food, like ramen, the kwaja, things like that. Or maybe a few of you say, you know, I will save it for later. But I doubt it. Anyway, when we have big money, we tend to use it for ourselves, for our own desire. You know, if I give, if I have like an open one on my hand right now, I'll probably be like, what am I going to do? I get a business class to Korea. Maybe. But here's the thing. The son got a lot of money from his father. And what did he do? He made a poor decision. He went to a different country. You know, back then, they didn't have, you know, a flight. But anyway, he took first class to Dubai. And he went to, like, you know, casino. He wasted them all. And what happened? He's away from home, far away from home. He had no money. He, he had no one. People that he played with, they all left him because he had no money. And Thursday that he went through, he realized now, realization, he realized that he made a dumb mistake. And he finally realized that home is the best place. Home is safe, and home is where he belongs, where his father is at. And then what is the last stage, fourth stage? He admit and came back. He admitted that he made a mistake. He admitted to his father, you know what, Dad, Father, I have sinned against you. Forgive me. So he went back to his father. Those are the four stages that the prodigal went through. But here's the thing. We are the prodigal son. You and I are the prodigal son. You and I are the same person that son is. God is our father. And we, the prodigal sons, are sinners. Remember how the son has confessed. Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. Guys, that should be our confession to our father God, that we have sinned against him. Think about the four stages the son has gone through. And the four stages of sin that we are going through. The first stage, ignorant. Here's the thing. We don't know what we are doing. We don't know that we are sinning against God. We think we are good. And we believe we are a good person, good son, good student, good Christian. But here's the thing. We have no knowledge about sins we have committed. Or we don't think the things that we have done are sins. We think we are good. We think we are rich. We think we are worthy. We ignore it. And the second stage, what do we do? We leave God away from home. We stay away from God. We stay away from church. We believe, you know what? We are fine. We don't need God. I have everything that I want in my hand. I don't need God anymore. So we stay away from God. Third, third stage, realization. We realize that, you know what? I'm a sinner and I'm a sinner against God. After going through everything, after thinking that we're good, after thinking that we don't need God, we finally realize, you know what? I need God. I need his love. I need his forgiveness. I need his grace. Leaving God was a dumb idea, and there's no place like God. And what was the last stage? We admit and go back. So what do we do? We repent. We repent. Admit our sin. We confess our sin and ask God for his forgiveness. God, I have sinned against you. And now I am finally turning back to you. Forgive my sin so I can be your servant again. 
When we repent, what does God do for us? Does he spank us? Does he punish us? Or does he say, you know what? Because you made a dumb mistake, you're not my kid anymore. You're not my son anymore. You, you know what? You're going to be my servant. I'm not going to love you anymore. I'm not going to give you anything anymore. All you got to do is do everything that I tell you to do. Does God do that for us? No. When we admit, confess our sin, and go back to God, just like the father did, who did to his prodigal son, he runs to us, he hugs us, and he kisses us, and he made us a better person. That is the restoration of relationship. When we ask God for forgiveness, and when we honestly admit that God is my father, he's my home, and that is where I belong, yes, not only he will forgive us, not only he will encourage us, but he will also love us, hug us, kisses us, and will make us a better person. That proves us one thing, guys. That proves the one fact that God is our home. God is our home. How is God our home? Here's the thing. We are God's creation. The fact that we are, crea we are God's creation, it means that we, God is our home. Think about how God created us, okay? The rest of creation, God said, you know what? God spoke and everything began to exist. But human beings, how did God created us? He molded us. And he breathed life into our nostril. And he spoke and the life came into us. In other words, we are specially, uniquely, and wonderfully created. You and I. That's how we are created. That's how we are created. And we are now living like this. That proves that we are his creation. The second thing, how God is our home, we are loved by God. Romans chapter 8, verse 30, 39, it says, For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. What does it mean? There's nothing. In the past, in the present, in the future, anything. There's nothing in this universe that will separate us from the love of God. In other words, we are always and forever tied in God's love. God's love is forever and eternal. And the third reason why God is our home, we are his children. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 says, See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. And so we are. John is clearly explaining us that we are God's children. The God who loves us eternally and forever is now calling us his children. And these are the fact that it proves that God is our home. And because God is our home, home is where we need to be. Home is where we need to be. Guys, think about the example of the prodigal son. Away from home and at home, it makes a lot of difference. Away from home, he's just a dumb person. He has nothing, no money, no person, no family, no friend, nothing. But at home, he's dressed with the best robe. He's fed, and all the things that he had is all because he was at home with his father. And home is where we feel safe, we feel comfortable, and there's no danger at home. Home is where we belong. Let me ask you a question. All of you, where are you right now? Are you at home or are you about to leave home? Think about the four stages of the prodigal son. 
Think about the four stages. Are you ignorant? Are you away from him? Or you realized that, have you realized that you are away from him, that you made a dumb mistake? Or are you on the way home? Where are you? If you're away from home, if you're away from God, then turn around, make a U-turn, and go back to God, your home. If you're on the way, if you're on the way, good. But make your steps a little faster because God is waiting for you. If you're already at home, great. But don't be like the older kid, older son. What did the older son do? What did he do? When his younger brother came back, he began to complain. You know what? I've been working for you this long. Now you're forgiving this dumb brother? Guys, when our friends are coming back, my brothers and sisters are coming back, we should rejoice that our brother and sister came back. Instead of being angry at him, you know what? He doesn't deserve to be forgiven. He doesn't deserve God. He doesn't deserve love. No. Embrace him. If God is our father and God loves our brothers and sisters, then we should also love our brothers and sisters because we are God's son. And that is what church should do. Always remember that we have home where we can return, and that home is God. And he's there waiting for us to return. If you're already with him, great. Stay with him and stay there forever and never leave. But if you're coming back or if you're away from him, turn around, turn to God, and head to him. And I trust you, I promise you, when he finds you, when you find him, you'll be most loved, you'll feel most comfortable and safe next to God. Guys, home is where we belong. And God is our home. Home sweet home. God sweet God. Because God loves us. It is my prayer that we all find ourselves home in God and with God. So my brothers and sisters, I pray, I pray for y'all that all of us will be at same home in God together and forever. Let's pray.